Kiwi. Time now to talk about UV and infrared photography. You may not have heard of this before, but um, using some special, pretty special camera equipment, I would imagine, you can capture the light that we cannot see with our own human eyes. Diane Tuft specialises in this and through this photography is able to see some of what's happening to our atmosphere, the ozone layer, global warming, that kind of thing. Diane Tuft lives in New York City and she joins us there this morning. Hello to you, Diane. Hello. Good Hello. morning, Glenn. Good morning to you. Now, how long have you been doing this type of photography? About 13 years. And what does it, um, I mean, it involve? I mean, did you, did you get into it by accident? Uh, no, I'm actually, uh, I have a little bit of a science background plus art, so I've been, I'm always very curious to see what goes beyond just a, a normal photograph. So I started photographing with infrared film uh, just to see what it did, and uh, I got amazing, fantastic photographs, which unfortunately I don't think I gave you any of those in my um some of your original in photographs. My, uh, yeah hmm. but anyway the infrared photographs show this amazing landscape that you couldn't see with your own eyes and then after so I did that for um about eight years and then I was going over to the spiral jetty the spiral jetty is a uh, earth art site in uh, Utah yeah in the Great Salt Lake uh, to photograph it with black and white infrared film. And I had just um, purchased on loan a digital camera um, because it's very difficult to take infrared film through airports. You can't open it. It has to be in darkness. You can't x-ray it. Huh. So it was becoming a problem. So I decided, well, I'm going to try a digital camera. So as I was flying to the spiral jetty, um, I looked down and there were like these amazing colors and the only color camera I had was the digital one. So I basically looked down, I took a few shots with the digital camera, came back to New York, but the colors were so much more intense than I had seen. Wow. So I did research and I found out that there was an entire university that was specializing in the ultraviolet light that was in the Great Salt Lake. Um, it's an unusual lake because it's very high up, it's shallow, it has a lot of salt, and, um, and in fact, those are the images from there. And all these little microorganisms were being studied to see how we as human beings could handle ultraviolet light. These little microorganisms create crusts in order for them to not uh, be completely engulfed in heat and right. light. Okay. So uh, after this, I decided to go around the world looking for ultraviolet light, and that's what I do now. I'm just looking at one of these photos from um, Salt Lake, uh, where it, it looks like, I mean, it's hard to tell really, I mean, it, it looks like yes. um, a dye has been placed in a, in a Petri dish or something. Mm. What do we, what do we um, describe this, this photo that I'm looking at now? Well, all of these photographs were taken uh, by helicopter above the lake. And so when you look with your own eyes, you really can't see this. But I suppose these the red part of this is some sort of formation of some microorganisms, and the mm. white is probably very salt and... You know, I create my own photographs, so not no Photoshop. These are all natural, but you know, I've cropped it in such a way through my eye that I think that's a little bit of a shore. They have these little divisions in the middle of the lake because they actually mine salt. Yeah, okay. So I um, think that's what, what it is. But I'm, you know, I'm lost in the clouds when I'm doing this, yeah, and no, I just... Yeah, no doubt. I just photograph... <laughs> So, so, so the, the, the so uh, that's okay. So, there's amazing colors that you do get and that we see in your photo, photographs. And if, if anyone's just uh, listening to this, I recommend going on, along to Diane Tuft uh, dot com, isn't it? Dot, yes, dot com and checking out um, these photos. Um, they, they, so, they are natural. There's no post work done, there's no filters being applied Nothing. afterwards. Yeah, um, and, and None you, at all. So, you made the leap from 
film to digital, I mean, there must be some special settings that you have on the digital camera in order to get this. Well, the problem I had was I couldn't figure out why I was getting these amazing colors. Um, and every camera manufacturer will tell you that you cannot um, capture any ultraviolet light in a camera. In fact, they put UV lenses on them so that you won't be able to they tell you that the lens completely gets rid of all uv light because mm. i think you know nobody wants uv light in their photograph mm. but the digital camera is just a sort of a pretend way of making visual light look real so what they have to do is they have to do something called white balance in order to get everything to look like you would look and if you fool around with a white balance, the camera really doesn't understand what it's capturing, and you can get some UV light. Okay, so that's some. Um, so that's Salt Lake. But where else have you been? So when I was looking, I decided where else is a better place to go is the Arctic Circle to go to Greenland and Iceland, where um, you're very close to the ozone layer, where there is ozone depletion, and. Um, so that's where I spent, I, I took five trips to the Arctic, four, uh, one in, um, I guess, four in Iceland and one in Greenland. Right, which is um, an amazing place, of course, normally an amazing place, but even right now, it's on the front lines of the climate mm -hmm. change issue, isn't it? It is, it really is, and I'm, I'm sort of shocked that the world is sort of ignoring a lot of it. You know, nobody really understands that last um march the ozone layer in the arctic circle was depleted by half hmm. it's usually about 400 gubs that's the thickness of the ozone and it went down to 200 and uh that ozone depletion traveled from northern finland through southern finland through europe all the way and weather you know goes east hmm. Towards the United States, I still believe that it had something to do with the tornadoes that we had in the United States, but I haven't been able to find any scientists. Mm. There's a lot of other people that feel the same way to go along with that theory because it's a theory. Yeah. Um, it's not proven, and scientists are really loath to say anything that isn't specifically true. Well, it's, it's, hard, it just it's, so hard, happened. it's hard to pin individual yeah. weather events on, on global warming. It is. As a whole. Yeah. It is. It's very mm. difficult. Mm. Um, uh, okay, so so you travelled up there to to Greenland, um, and, and as you said that so that UV, um, the UV uh, or the yeah, the UV index was going higher, the ozone lo um, layer depleting. How does that change what you are seeing through the um, infrared UV lenses? Uh, well, first of all, infrared in, is different than ultraviolet. My infrared is is infrared film, which unfortunately has been discontinued. So the only thing left is what's in my refrigerator right now, my okay. freezer. Yeah. Um, and that's film. That's black and white, and that's done with film with a tripod. Uh, the UV is done mostly. I do it mostly air, you know, through the air, because it's it's a much better. Uh, direction, you know, UV light waves are short. So if you are directly above something or directly in, directly above something, you'll get a better UV um, effect. Right. So um, um, I forgot what you asked me. I well, I just so so, so <laughs> that, those changes in the Arctic. I mean, what what have you noticed oh, through, you, through your okay, photography? So yeah. for instance, mm. for instance. Um, I don't know if you have the pictures there, but in Greenland, I have, you know, some really beautiful photographs of the icebergs. And if you looked at the icebergs with your own eyes, they would just look like blue and white and just big and gorgeous. And that's actually um, <laughs> yeah. Iceland, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll it there. Uh, but uh, with uh, UV, UV is uh, sort of enhances purples and greens. So... What was blue and white in my own eyes became purples and greens and just really pretty magnificent. But the photograph that you just showed is a very interesting photograph. That was taken just in um, this August. I went up to Iceland, and the series is called Aftermath, and it was after the eruption of the last volcano. Hmm. 
And so this photograph is really very interesting. I mean, I really have no idea what happened here. Again, it's UV. I'm just photographing, and then it appears. Well, but we're surely we're looking at. Uh, so what? So I, what, what I'm how I interpret. What are you photos. looking at? Well, snow. What what you, was, a hillside covered in snow with you know a few shadows. No. What? What are we looking at? <laughs> not at all. If you look really closely, and it's kind of hard to look, um, but that's actually all water. Oh. Iceland has a tremendous amount of sulfur in the water because it's uh, very similar to New Zealand, where um, it's a uh, geothermal island. They're very di- they're very similar, Iceland and, and New Zealand, in terms of uh, geothermal heat. Nobody pays for electricity in Iceland. It's you put on your your tap, and it's hot water. Mm. You have to cool it off. So um, almost all the rivers are full of sulfur, and so this is a stream. It's all all white, but for some reason in the center, I'm not sure how. There's just some blue that appeared. Yeah, and I'm not, and I have no idea. (laughs) But I think that's one of the most beautiful photographs that I've ever done. Pretty, it's it's an amazing photograph. Pretty amazing, and and for those just listening to the audio, yeah, to me, just you know, um, if you were just to see this flicking through um, some pages of a photograph book, you go, well, there's um, a hillside covered in snow, but no, it's actually water. So um, that is pretty pretty amazing. Um, but you, you're quite keen to travel to uh, this part of the world where we've had um, yeah. ozone depletion with the ozone hole down down here for a long, long time to see what's happening um, in this part of the world. Yes, I'm actually planning, I just found out yesterday that I'm planning to be there on um, January 12th through January 20th. Huh. And I will be photographing from the air and land New Zealand. And what happened last year, I mean, I have been in New Zealand uh, about 10 years ago, and I didn't really notice a tremendous amount of ultraviolet light. Um, but my friends just came back this January, and they have purchased my photos. They know what I do. And they told me that I had to go immediately there, that the ultraviolet light was crazy, that they couldn't be out in this, outside you know, for more than, you know, 10 minutes without mm. any kind of protection. Mm. And I looked up the UV index and I was really shocked that it was 13 to 16 all over New Zealand. Yeah. 13 to 16 is more than the danger level. Mm. And, you know, most places, even around the equator, get to be 10 and that's considered high. Yeah. So I was really shocked and I was really upset. And then I did more research and found out that you have the highest melanoma rate. And nobody knows about this. I mean, you know, it's New Zealand, you know, it's down under. Yeah. You know. We play rugby. You know, not New York. <laughs> yeah. You know, exactly. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is really horrible. And I wanted to bring uh, the attention of New Zealand to the world. Um, so I am going to go there. I am going to photograph. I would assume that this year it will probably be the same UV index. Um, I don't have a hold on the history of it but mm. i think that it's been going up even though people say there is no ozone depletion in new zealand so but how, lots of people okay so how does this work then so i mean the photographs themselves are beautiful and they do capture your attention because of that but how do you tra- then translate that into environmental action say well i hope by people looking at these photographs and thinking they're so gorgeous and you know why are they like that that they will ask the questions that you've just asked and then they will become aware of it and what can we do about it um i think new zealand's really handling it really well i mean you get up in the morning and you know your uv UV index is Mm. but many places in the world they don't know and i do believe that there's probably ozone depletion everywhere and we just don't know about it and we're not concerned and I just think that there's a, there's a big problem, and we have to just protect ourselves from it. Yeah. Okay. So it's just gen- generally highlighting the issue. Well, um, can't wait to see the photographs here in New Zealand over our um, over our summer. I think the summer's going to be a cracker as well. It's going to be nice and warm and hot, and um, it's going to be great. <laughs> 
Uh, DianeTuff.com is where you head um, for all these photos and a whole lot more and all sort of background information to this stuff as well. Very, very cool. Um, love to um, love to uh, meet you in January and um, perhaps drop by the studio and have Definitely. a chat as well. Look forward to that. Diane, Definitely. thanks so much. Cheers. Thank you very much, Glenn. Diane nice Tuff to talk to you. In, Thank uh, you. in New York here on Kiwi.